Good morning. Welcome to Spring Piston Rifle Fever and Lomo Strike Training. Today I want to introduce you to three old classic books. We have the Raider Master Bodybuilding and Weight Gain System book. These are very old books. Then they had the Iron Man Barbell Course number one by Perry Raider for, be for beginners and advanced bodybuilders. And then the last book that they had, I believe, they might have more, as far as I know, um, or don't know, <laughs> Iron Man Dumbbell Course, number one. These books are classics, and I would say if you don't have them in your collection, you need to find them and get them. Uh, this is a time when people flourished and got very strong and very big on dumbbells and barbells and lots of food and not much else they didn't follow any super uh, bodybuilding program they lifted heavy weights and they got big and they got strong inside here is a few routines i don't fully agree with all the routines or the exercise form done on some of them but nonetheless these people from the past got very big and very strong from doing basic barbell training Screw things back a little here so I got some room there. So, inside, old picture of John Greenick. I think he looked like he was in his 40s then, but still very stout. Um, natural, I don't think that guy took any steroids. He does not look steroid bloated to me. I'd much rather have uh, health and strength than be a big bloated fake bodybuilder. That's my opinion on them. Uh, there's nothing wrong with bodybuilding, but if you got to take steroids to achieve your particular goals, they do not relate to health and strength. I am into health and strength. That was the main thing back in the day, was health and strength. Nowadays, it's get big and strong no matter what it takes. Ronnie Coleman, he would tell you otherwise. No, he, I think he thinks it's okay that he can't walk or anything, even though he devastated his body. So, to me, that's foolishness. Nothing is more important than your health. So, this was put out by William F. Heinburn. And there's his address and everything at the bottom, if you want to contact him. I definitely do not support him in any way, shape, or form. I'm just showing this so <clears throat> in case you want to try to find this literature. And I don't even know if you can get this stuff anymore. Here, the barbell course, number one, was very similar to this master, uh, Raider Master Bodybuilding Weight Gain System. It shows, once again, right on the cover, not too much different, John Gremick. And it's got a barbell course number one in here. Let me move that guy out of the way. So it's got diet for weight gaining in here. It's got a food eating system for you in here. Diet is a big part of weightlifting. If you're not eating enough and eating enough of the right foods and resting enough, talks about rest and sleep, frequency of workouts, rest for weight gainers, sets and reps over here. Hard work is necessary. Advanced training methods. Then it has something else that you will not find in other books nowadays. This actually has a section on the Olympic lifts, which is very important. Nowadays, everything is on uh, bodybuilding and powerlifting. Not a whole lot on Olympic weightlifting. I would highly suggest that you learn some of the Olympic weightlifting movements. Power clean and power snatch, um, push presses and uh, jerks and push jerks are a lot of fun to learn. Nothing wrong with them. How to perform the exercises. The guy might look a little undersized, but there are two different models here. But they still got some decent muscle on them. 
Um, I don't agree with this guy's form in the barbell bent over row. I would never suggest anybody doing this exercise in this way. I would recommend a flat back, having your body at approximately 45 degrees on that. Um, demonstrating the bench press with light weights. Demonstrating the full squat and a barbell pullover, which was really advocated after a set of very hard squats. It was like called the breathing pullover to expand your rib cage. That is something that is also emphasized in here. Here we have a lifter that is demonstrating the Raider chest pull. So he's holding onto this pole right here and he's literally stretching his rib cage and taking big deep breaths. He pulls on this bar hard, not necessarily with his muscles of his arm, but they're only attachments. It's to stretch everything in here while he takes a big breath to expand that rib cage. Here shows some pressing behind the neck, which everybody says is dangerous, but I say if you can do it without pain and you get something out of it, then do it. <laughs> Calf raises. Here he's doing some stiff-legged deadlifts. Once again, I don't agree with that round back. Very round back. I think you should do them with a flat back. That's my opinion on that matter. Here he's doing some dumbbell uh, side bends, doing some manual neck work. Doing some forearm work. And over here, they finally get back to the Olympic lifts. I don't know why they had them separated in here. I think when it said the Olympic section, he should have had the whole Olympic section in here. So it has two Olympic weightlifters in here, and it talks about the three Olympic lifts that they had at the time. It was the military press or Olympic press, the clean and jerk, and the snatch. Some more stuff in here. More stuff over here. Then it has bodybuilding workouts over here and routines. Like as for a beginner here, um, two arm press, two arm curl, bench press, rowing, squat, pull over calf raise, sit up. And in my opinion, a lot of these workouts get to have too much stuff in them. You get too much stuff in them, it gets hard to, hard to gain. Mm -hmm. Right now, more people are coming to the point of realizing that the less is more mentality. Um, I was watching a little bit with uh, of Jeff Nepetard video, and he's been putting more stuff out on minimalist training. Um, here's my advice to you on minimalist training. Do what works. And if you're doing something <clears throat> that is working already, then don't change it. It makes no sense to change it. It makes no sense to add a bunch of stuff or probably any stuff to it. If you're gaining on a pressing movement, you're gaining on a pulling movement, gaining on a squatting and deadlifting or both, um, there's no reason to change things. So here's the history of these methods in this book in the master bodybuilding weight gain system. Here's the old picture of Doug Hefburn. Very big. Old picture of Paul Anderson. He had some fat on him, but he had some serious muscle too. Look at those thighs. This guy was a lifting machine. This covers a lot of different topics in it. <laughs> Sleep, rest, and relaxation, breathing, massage, diet for weight gaining. By diet, they mean eat a lot. <laughs> right, one of the things, one of the workouts that really is pushed in here is squatting and stiff legged deadlifting. I really like this setup here that this guy has here. He has a place to do stiff legged deadlifts, and I don't recommend, I don't agree with the round back once again. And they also did a bouncing deadlift. I don't agree with that either. I agree using better form and technique. And that way you won't hurt your back. They were using the bounce technique to take pressure off the bottom of the movement. The pressure of the bo bottom of the movement is the most important aspect of the lift. Um, it's got this super nice cambered bar here. 
So it was very cool. Um, like I said, 20 reps squatting and or two to three sets of 10 of the barbell or the barbell squat was highly recommended in here. Uh, mostly medium reps. They were recommending like eight to 12 reps on these exercises. Once again, it's just a handful of exercises. I'm not going to go through this whole thing again. It's the press, the curl, the bench press, the bent over row, the squat, the stiff legged deadlift, the Raider chest pullover. Those are the exercises emphasized in here. Um, once again, I want to say, if you're gaining already on what you're doing, you don't need to change it. Um, also, it doesn't take a lot to gain. A lot of people are doing a lot of sets, a lot of reps, a lot of exercises. And in my opinion, you only need one pressing exercise and one pulling exercise per workout and one squatting exercise if you do squats with your pressing and pulling. You only need one. If you work it hard enough and you gain strength from workout to workout, you don't need any more than that. It just doesn't make sense that you think you need to add more onto it. If you're gaining strength, you're going to be gaining muscle. It's as simple as that. So that's my two cents on the subject. This is my review of these three great books. If you like the video, definitely give me a like. Uh, subscribe. I'd highly appreciate that also. So God bless you all and you have a great day.